Brilliant guys, now you know what values and types are. Now in this video we'll discuss another basic building block of Scala, we'll talk about expressions. Let's get right to it. So in IntelliJ, just as we did in the last video, we're going to create a new application just for the, this lecture. So I'm going to right click on the lectures.part1basics package, new Scala class, I'm going to call this expressions. I'm going to select object in the drop down. Again, don't worry about the uh, object and make this extends app at the end. This will make the application runnable in IntelliJ. All right, good. Now watch what I'm writing. So I'm going to declare a little value x and I'm going to give it value 1 plus 2 and then I'm going to print it to the console. So nothing too spectacular here. Now in Scala we call this right hand side here 1 plus 2, we call this an expression. Expressions are evaluated to a value, in this case 3, and they have a type, in this case int. Now, as I said before, the compiler is smart enough to figure out the types of values depending on what's on the right hand side, so the fact that this is an expression and it has a type allows the compiler to set the type of x to int. All right. And now I know you've seen expressions in other languages and you may roll your eyes at this point, but bear with me because there are interesting things in this lecture, I promise. All right. Now, most ex the most basic expressions are math expressions. So if I print line, uh, say, 2 plus 3 times 4 with appropriate spacing, this is a math expression. So uh, uh, nothing too spectacular. Math expressions preserve the operation ordering we've been taught in school. So multiplication is done first, then the addition. Math operators are, of course, uh, plus, minus, multiply, divide, and then bitwise operators you've probably used in other languages like bitwise and, bitwise or, bitwise exclusive or, and bitwise left shift and right shift along with the this little particular right shifting uh, operation which is only specific to Scala and this is right shift with zero extension. This is a little bit uh, more rarely used but I just wanted you to know it exists. So these are expressions which are evaluated to something. This is a mathematical expression. Of course there are many many types of expressions. Say for example relational operations which test equality and non-equality. So for example if I print line the expression 1 equals equals x this tests for equality between the number 1 and the number x. This thing is an expression and it evaluates to a boolean. In this case, it will evaluate to false because x is 3, so it will print false to the console. Other relational operations are, so you've seen equals equals already, this tests for equality. We have non-equality, which is the not equal sign, this bang equals. We have relational operations between numbers. We have greater than, greater than or equal, less than, and less than or equal. Next we have boolean operators for logic, you've also likely seen this, so if I print line the negation of 1 equals x, we say not, this little bang, and in, inside parentheses we can have a condition, so 1 equals x. This is the logical negation. Logical negation is a unary operator, you can have logical and and logical or operators which are binary and these act on two booleans and return a boolean. You've also likely seen this before. Also you might have used operators for changing variables from other languages. So if I declare a var, a variable, which has the value 2 for example, and I say a variable plus equals 3, that means a variable turns out to be 5 because I'm adding 3 to it. This also works with um, minus equals, multiply equals, and divided by equals. So just to prove that this works, if I print this to the console I'm going to see the value 5. Note that this, um, these operators and the plus equals only work with variables. Like I mentioned in the previous video, changing a variable is called a side effect. So these are all side effects. Which brings me to the next very important topic that I want to talk about, which is the distinction between statements or instructions versus expressions. So instructions 
versus expressions. I want to make this distinction very, very clearly from the start because understanding this will clear a lot of confusions in the future. All right. So an instruction is something that you tell the computer to do. For example, change a variable, print to the console, do this or do that. In imperative languages like Java or Python, you work with instructions. So you basically always tell, tell the computer, do this, do that, compute this, compute that, show this to the console, print this to the console, send this to the server, and so on and so forth. All right. So instructions are doing something. By contrast, an expression is something that has a value or and or a type. All right. In Scala and in functional programming in general, we'll think in terms of expressions. That is, every single bit of your code will compute a value. Now, let me show you what I mean with a new Scala syntax example. So, a good example of this is the if expression in Scala, which acts in a very, very different way than in most other languages. So, if I say val, a condition which is something that you compute, right? Let's just say it's true for the sake of it. We don't really care about the actual value of a condition. Now, if we want a to compute a value in terms of this condition, so let's say val a conditioned value, we'll say in Scala, if a condition, and let's just say that if a condition is true, we'll have the value 5, otherwise we'll have the value 3. In Scala we say, if a condition 5, else 3. And let's print a conditioned value. All right, so we have the value 5 here because a condition is true. Now let me break this down for you. So what this code says is, a conditioned value here is either 5 if a condition is true or 3 otherwise. So notice that unlike other languages where you would say if a condition do something, that is set the value of 5, otherwise set the value of 3, the if expression gives back a value. That's why it's called an if expression, not an if instruction. All right. So to prove this further, you can actually use this if expression as is. So if I print this to the console, notice that the compiler doesn't complain. And I'm going to see another 5 here. So just as you would say, print line, I don't know, 1 plus 3, and this evaluates to 4, this thing is also something that evaluates to 5. So this is super important and we'll use if expressions a lot in the course and you will use it a lot in your code. So make sure you get this right. The if in Scala is an expression. All right, now you know about ifs. You're now probably curious to know about loops because it's the natural progression in learning a new programming language. And I'm here to tell you that there are loops in Scala, but we discourage using them because they're reminiscent of imperative programming like Java. They don't really return anything meaningful and only execute side effects. Let me give you an example though. So if I declare a variable, which I initialize with zero, and I want to count to 10. So I'm saying while i less than 10, and I'm going to create a little block of code, and I'm going to print each number, and I'm going to increment it by one. So i plus equals one. This is a while loop in Scala. And if I right click and run this application, I'm going to see all the numbers from zero to nine. All right. But next, I'm going to write this in all caps. Please never write this again. Now, if you ask me, OK, Daniel, but how do I actually iterate? We'll learn how to approach iteration very, very shortly, I promise. But please avoid while loops like the plague. That's because while and looping in general is very specific to imperative programming, that is Java or Python or C. The single worst thing a Scala programmer can do really is write imperative code with the Scala syntax, so please don't do this. We're talking about instructions and expressions and the difference between them, and Scala forces everything to be an expression. So everything in Scala is an expression. 
Only definitions, like the definition of a val, or a class, or a package, are not expressions, but everything else is. So keep that in mind. Operations, calling functions, if expressions, like you've seen here, every single thing. Even reassigning a variable is also an expression, it just doesn't return anything meaningful. So watch what I'm writing. I'm going to introduce a new concept here. So if I say val, I'm going to name this a weird value. And the value of a weird value is, I'm going to put this in between parentheses so it's more obvious for you, and I'm going to say a variable equals 3. So this thing has its own value and can be attributed to a weird value. Now the type of a weird value is, if I hover, it's unit. Unit is a very special type in Scala, which is equivalent to void in other languages. And it just means don't return anything meaningful. And the only possible value of unit is, I'm going to show you. Let's print this out. So if we print this, if I right click and run, we're going to see the value of unit. So the value of unit is this little guy, parenthesis, parenthesis. This is the only value the unit type can hold. So we said in the last video that reassigning a variable is a side effect. Now side effects in Scala are actually expressions returning unit. That's all you need to know. While loops, for example, are side effects and these expressions also return unit. For example, if I declare a value, call this a while, and if I hover over a while, the compiler infers it to be unit. That's because the while expression returns unit. So examples of side effects are Printing something to the console, for example, whiles and reassigning of vars. These are all side effects and there are expressions returning unit. So make sure you get this right. Side effects are reminiscent of imperative programming. That is, they are like instructions, but in Scala, they're still expressions returning unit. All right. Now, final thing. I'm going to talk about code blocks. Code blocks are a special kind of expressions because they have some special properties. So watch what I'm writing. I'm going to declare a value. I'm going to call this a code block. And this is, I'm going to open some curly braces and inside I'm going to define some more values. So let's say value y equals two and value z equals, I don't know, y plus one. And at the end, I'm going to say if z equals, if, I don't know, z greater than 2, I'm going to say hello, otherwise, goodbye. This little piece of code is called a code block. It's surrounded by curly braces, and inside we can write code. We can define values, we can write expressions, and so on and so forth. Now, two interesting bits about blocks. Number one, code block is an expression. Even the fact that I put it on the right-hand side of a value definition should tell you that this guy is an expression, like everything else in Scala. The value of the block is the value of its last expression. So the value of this whole block is the value of this if expression because it occurs last. All right. Sure enough, if I hover over a code block, it'll the compiler will say that this is a string that's because it's the type of the last expression, which is the type of both branches, okay? Now, interesting bit number two. Code blocks, as you can see here, can have their own definition of values and variables and so on and so forth inside. Everything you declare inside the code block stays visible within the code block. So if later outside the block I say, let's say val, say another value, equals, I don't know, z plus 1, it says cannot resolve symbol z, and that's because z is defined within a code block and it's not visible outside. All right, so let's delete this little thing. All right, you've learned quite a bit in this video. You've learned about basic expressions and operations between numbers and booleans and so on and so forth. But you've learned that if in Scala is not an instruction, it's actually an expression and it evaluates to something.
You've also learned that code blocks in Scala are also expressions, and their value is given by the value of the last constituent expression, plus the fact that inside code blocks you can have auxiliary definitions that are only visible inside the code block. But most importantly, you've learned to make the difference between instructions and expressions. So instructions are executed, think imperative languages like Java, think do something, versus expressions which are evaluated, like in functional languages in uh, Scala, for example. So instruction means do something versus an expression which means give me the value of something. You'll learn to make this subtle difference as we go through this course. Also in Scala and in functional languages in general we'll think more in terms of expressions and vowels of course, but this style of thinking will come natural to you as we progress. Now before we move on to exercises I wanted to ask a little 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 thing of you. Please, please do not use while loops in your Scala code or I'll be part of your biggest nightmares. Okay? All right, now joking aside, let's move on to some exercises. So I have a couple of questions for you. First, what is the difference between the string hello world and print line hello world? Think about it. Second question is, what's the value of this guy? Uh, I'm going to declare a value. Let's call this sum value equals code block two less than three. So what's the value of this? All right. Also, what's the value of this little guy? Let's call this some other value, which is again a code block, and I'm going to say if some value then 239 otherwise 986 and 42 so what's the value of this little guy okay so pause the video now and i'm going to give you the solutions right now all right so i hope you gave these two very very simple questions some thought i'm going to give you the answers now so for the first question the difference between the string hello world versus print line hello world well the string hello world this guy is a value of type string the hello world is a string literal we like to say the print line hello world is an expression which is a side effect and if you've paid attention to side effects they are expressions returning unit so the types of these two things are different the first is a string and this guy is unit this also has the side effect that's why it's called a side effect of actually printing the string hello world to the console all right so these uh, these two are the main differences between the string hello world versus print line hello world all right as for the second question some value is a value of type boolean. It's a code block and the value of the code block is the value of its last expression. Now given that this block only has one expression, this guy is a relational operation and returns a boolean. If you hover over some value, it says it's a boolean. And in particular, the value of some value is obviously true because two is less than three. If we print this out to the console, um, we'll see um, the value true in the console. But we'll print some other value as well to convince ourselves of um, the value of this guy as well. So some other value is also a code block and the value of the code block is the value of the, the last constituent expression. Now this might be a small trick question because the value of this code block is this little guy, 42. This is the value of some other value. This, the type of some other value is an int and its value is 42. This if expression is completely irrelevant. So if I print this out, uh, we're going to see uh, the value true and the value 42. Okay, so obviously the value true and the value 42. So this is the solution to the two questions. All right, this is Daniel. This video was pretty basic, but I think you've learned quite a bit of new stuff, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.